Guten Tag, developers. Those who speak German know that means good day. Speaking of days, did you know you could use email markup and the Google Calendar API so your apps can create calendar events on behalf of your users? Well, it's true. I've got code and videos to prove it. But plans change, and wouldn't it be awesome if you could also update events when plans change or create repeating events? Welcome to the G Suite Dev Show. I'm your host, Wesley Chun. Today, we'll show how your apps can update existing events with a calendar API and, as a bonus, make them repeat, too. In the video on email markup, I describe how it helps Gmail automatically add events to your users' calendars. It's simple and doesn't require you to write any code. You're only adding markup to messages you're already sending to users. Check out the video and email markup docs to see how to do this with the links down below. But as a developer, you may want more control and not rely on another app to do the work. What if you had a typo in your markup? Or what if your user's email clients don't process markup? No calendar event. Instead, your app can explicitly insert events into your user's calendars. Here's another video where I show you how to use the Calendar API to set up dinner with friends. Check out the video and blog post to review the JSON payload used to create that event. Well, here's the JSON payload in Python dictionary format from that video. The event variable is how we ask the API to create that initial dinner invite to begin with. It's got the event name, the start and end times, and invitees. This entry or record is the API resource for this event. By the way, what do you think the R in URL stands for? Well, we're happy that dinner worked out, but imagine another dinner that didn't, leaving you with an unfulfilled calendar event. But wait, today you got the good news that your friend got assigned a job nearby for the rest of the year. Not only do you want to get that dinner back on track, but also want to make it a bi-monthly thing until the end of the year. This is the perfect feature to update your app with. It saved the original event ID from the dinner that didn't work out, and now it only needs to be updated with the new dates and to make it repeat. The Calendar API gives you two ways of updating events. You can either patch, meaning updating one or more fields of the event resource, or update, meaning recreate the entire resource. We'll look at both and discuss when you'd pick one over the other. To update individual fields, use the events.patch method, named as such because you're patching the updated fields, you know, the deltas from the original resource. In our case, we've got to patch the new date into the event. Also, we're now using a time zone instead of a specific offset from GMT. This allows for events to observe daylight savings time, meaning a 7 p.m. dinner stays at 7 p.m. as we cross the fall and spring boundaries. You can still use an offset with a time zone if you wish, as they are independent of each other. Something you haven't seen before is how to do repeating events. To do this, you need to define what's known as a recurrence rule, which answers the question of how often an event repeats. It looks somewhat cryptic, but follows the RFC 5545 internet standard, which you can basically decode like this. The event has a frequency of occurring monthly, but with an interval of two, meaning every other month, till the end of the year. More info and examples at the RFC link down below. The other alternative to modifying an event in a calendar is update, meaning replacing the whole thing. This is likely the best choice if you're updating most or all of the fields anyway. Create a new resource with all the existing and updated fields as if you were starting from scratch. Then call events.update to override the whole entire resource. Since we only need to update the date and add a recurrence rule, which of the two choices seems better? Yep. Patch, because we're only modifying two fields. Which you choose depends on your situation, though. Because if you want to change the event name or have a whole new group of friends, you'd probably choose Update, since you're changing most of the fields, right? By the way, regardless of whether you use Patch or Update in a real app, your user may make changes from their desktop or mobile device. And typically, you want to avoid conflicting changes or race conditions. So we recommend using the if match header and an e-tag string to uniquely identify updates. For more info on the latter, check out the conditional modification page in the docs. The code's in Python to keep things brief, but feel free to use the client library for your favorite language. Create a project in the developer's console with a calendar API enabled. Then create an event in Google Calendar and grab its ID. Check out the previous video if you don't know how to do that. Once you're set, we can go to the computer now and look at some code to modify that event. Lines 1 through 13 is the standard boilerplate we've covered in many of our other videos. But here, pay extra attention to line 7, which is the read-write scope for Google Calendar, and line 13, which is where we create the service endpoint to the Google Calendar API. As mentioned earlier, we chose patch in this example because we're only changing the date and making this event repeat. The time zone on line 15 is immediately followed by the event payload on line 16 through 20 you need to change line 21 for your event ID. 
22 and 23 send this request to the API with a call to events.patch. Finally, the print call at the end gives us a receipt showing the user the modified event, including the newly installed recurrence rule. Alright, now let's run this thing. Since I've personally run this before, we won't see the OAuth 2 prompt here, but you'll get it on your first try. The on-screen output shows a new event information, but as you can see, it showed up on our Google Calendar too. Ta-da! Obviously the script I ran had a real event ID, but the rest of it is exactly what we just covered on screen. Code that modifies calendar events and making them repeat, all in about 30 lines of code. Anyway, take a look at the deep dive post if you want to dig into the details. Your next steps? Check out the official docs for everything you need to know. If you're new to the Calendar API, specifically check out the Concepts and Overview page. The final resource is a guide on calendar and event objects. It even covers recurrence. Armed with this newfound knowledge, you're now well on your way to giving your users an even better experience by enhancing your app with the Google Calendar API. Let us know how it works for you down in the comments below and give us ideas for future videos. This is Wesley Chan, and we'll see you upstairs in the G Suite.